Hello, my name is Maryam Habib. In this presentation video, I will take you through Ibrahim the Salahi life in a form of a virtual gallery, glancing on how he became an artist, what was his inspiration, what movement he is focusing on, and how his life experiences influenced his artworks. Ibrahim al Salahi, the grandfather of African contemporary art. Ibrahim Salahi is a Sudanese artist who was born on the 5th of September 1930 in Omdurman, Sudan. He wanted to study medicine, but his grades prevented him, and therefore he became an artist and had a lot of successes. He studied art at the School of Design of the Gordon Memorial College, currently the University of Khartoum. Thanks to his hard work, he was able to win a scholarship for Slade School of Art, one of the best in the UK. Another recognition of his great talent came when he was awarded the UNESCO scholarship to study and work in the United States. The UNESCO scholarship consists of a sum of money offered by UNESCO, an organization whose objective is to promote culture. He is also a former public servant and a diplomat, an important figure in African and Arab modernism. Moving on to Ibrahim the Salahi life. Ibrahim the Salahi is an all-rounder, a visionary artist, a free thinker, a national treasure, and above all, a revolutionist against the routine and injustice. His biography and artworks should be a part of the Sudan's school curriculum. He was an assistant cultural attaché at the Sudanese Embassy in London from 1969 to 1972, when he returned to Sudan and became an undersecretary in the Ministry of Culture and Information until September 1975. At that time, he was imprisoned without charge for six months. In the occasion of the Tate Modern Gallery's first retrospective exhibition of a contemporary artist from Africa in 2013, Al Salahi's work was characterized as a new Sudanese visual vocabulary, which arose from his own pioneering integration of Islamic, African, Arab, and Western artistic traditions. Moreover, Al Salahi is seen as a part of a broader Islamic art movement that emerged independently across North Africa in the 1950s and is known as the Hurafiya art movement. Hurafiya refers to the attempt by artists to combine traditional art forms, notably calligraphy, as a graphic element within a contemporary artwork. Al Salahi has been remarkable for his creative and intellectual thought and his rare body of work innovative visual vocabulary and spectacular style have combined to shape African modernism in the visual arts in a powerful way. As for the social issues, unlike some of his predecessors in the modernist movement in Sudan or elsewhere in Africa, he did not engage in art as an academic exercise, nor he uncritically accept the lessons of the Western modernist tradition. A man of great integrity, morally and ideologically, he is an exemplary among intellectuals of his generation for remaining true to his vision of a world free of injustice and limitation. He firmly believes in a free and democratic society that respects artistic and individual expressions and adamantly refuses to bow to regimes of co-optation and corruption. Moving on to Salahi's artwork. Salahi developed his own style and was one of the first artists to elaborate the Arabic calligraphy in his paintings. He developed an iconography from sources in primitive and Muslim art. Aside from that, the noticeable element of his work was Sufism. Some of his paintings included Arabic calligraphy, scripture from Quran, and Sufi sublimation and most notably in the portrait of his father passing away painting, the one on the top left. What you're seeing right now considered to be one of his famous artwork, the inevitable. 
The inevitable is that Salah's reaction to his time spent in prison became this divided into nine separate sections that represent the different periods of time incarcerated. When he was deprived of paper, Ibrahim Salahi would sketch out plans for future paintings on the back of a small cement chasm before burying them in the sand whenever a guard would come near. Working in this manner led to the artist developing a new style, one seen in the inevitable, where a painting spreads out from what he refers to as the nucleus or the germ of, the, of an idea with a meaning hidden even from the artist himself until the work is finished. Only when he saw the inevitable completed did a Salahi realize how clear the message was, that people must rise up and fight tyranny and those that suppress them. This was something he felt was relevant not just to his own life when he created the work in the mid 80s, but to all of Sudan. Nicola Melanie's write about the painting in the inevitable, eyes are shaded out into black voids or are averted from the viewer. Only a soldier keeps a sideways watch on us. The picture is machine-like, sharp and cold, for there is a demand and a prayer made in each of Salahi's designs. And in this picture, the questions posed are the same. But here the responsibility is even greater. Who will dare to look at this? Who will dare to do something to avoid the inevitable? In relation to the day, Salahi's accomplishments offer a profound possibilities for understanding African modernism in the context of modernity as a universal idea, one in which African art history is a part and pinnacle of a global art history. The essays in a visionary modernist reconstruct the remarkable journey of Salahi and through a critical look at his artistic contributions, expand the narrative of modernism in the visual arts from comparative and international perspectives. The motives and images, styles and forms of Salahi's work have drawn from a great array of classical and traditional African, Arab, and Islamic visual sources, as well as from European ones. His unique painterly language and breaks have left indelible marks on the art scenes today, acting a formative influence of the work of a generation of artists in Sudan and elsewhere in Africa. To wrap up, Ibrahim Salahi has been one of the most prominent figures of African modernism through both his extraordinary legacy as a writer, critic, and the remarkable breadth of his artwork, in which he has deeply explored all kinds of painterly strategies. He had made a foundational contributions to the modernist movement in African visual arts. And I quote one of his famous sayings, a picture is no more than a mirror, a vehicle that takes one back to oneself to turn one's sight inward to find the self within and begin to meditate. We reached the end of our presentation. Thank you all for listening. I hope you enjoyed it. These are the references. In addition, I listed for you his social media accounts and some videos that he talked more in details about his life and his artwork. And finally, for the questions. First, what was the art movement he was known for? Second, what was his style in art? Third, how his time in prison influenced his artwork?